So this is going to be a quick little video on some of the new features that were added into the Ringmaster ZBrush unofficial plugin for version 1.1. To start off, if you have any issues running the Ringmaster plugin, make sure you have ZBrush 4R7 P3 installed. So if you open up ZBrush, you're going to notice up at the top here, it's going to say ZBrush 4R7, and you want to make sure it has a P3 after it. There has been three patches since the initial 4R7 release, so you just want to make sure you have the current version. Now, if it doesn't say 4R7 P3 up here, you just need to run a upgrader file. So to do this, you just need to navigate to your ZBrush 4R7 folder, and this is where the ZBrush executables live. And in here, you need to locate the zupgrader.exe file. So all you have to do is double click that file there, and it will download the patches for 4R7, bringing you up to version P3. So the Ringmaster plugin has had a few additional features added to it. The first thing is that now with the US sizes, we also have half sizes. So you can come through here and type in half sizes, and it will get these sizes for you. In addition to these half sizes, there is now a config file that you can edit which will correspond to the millimeter values of these half sizes. So if you navigate to your 4R7 Z Startup Z Plugs 64, or just Z Plugs, and then locate the Ringmaster folder, in here you'll find a ringsizes.txt file. And if you just double click that, it's gonna load this file like so. And in here we have the corresponding US size, and then the millimeter values that are currently there. So if you wanted to edit the 6.5 US size here, you just come through here, type in your new value here, make sure you keep this spacing exactly how it is, and then just save that out. And that will allow you to load in different ring sizes for the US standard stuff if needed. Next, the millimeter value has been increased for the Ringmaster to allow for bracelets to be created. So you can change this millimeter size here all the way up to 80 millimeters now. So you can come through and set these values here. The thickness has also been increased and the width has been increased as well. So you can come through and change these sliders to whatever value you want and then simply click Create Ring Base Mesh. Now after you have your ring created, you can now add gemstones to your ring and these gemstones will be sized correctly based on a scale. So if I come over here and just open this up, this is the gemstone area here. And in here we have a few options for different stones you can create. So you just simply select the stone you want to create, type in the overall dimension for the stone. So if I want to do a round and have it be a four millimeter stone, and then just simply click add gemstone. Now after this is added, it's going to appear in your file like so. These gemstones are set up with creasing, so you can activate dynamic subdivision and the creasing will hold. And just to test this gemstone out here, we can now make sure we have that gemstone subtool selected. Just go to export here. And then we're just gonna save that stone out like so. And now I'm gonna switch over to NetFab. Go to project add part. Now I'm gonna select that stone. And you see it's gonna load in like so. And you should get a millimeter value of four and four. Now the width is gonna vary based on the preset stone that I've created here. If you want to apply your own stones or create your own stones for use with the plugin, just make sure you get the name of the one you want to replace and then navigate back to your ZBrush Z Startup, Z Plugs 64 for the 64 bit or Z Plugs for the 32. Locate that Ringmaster folder there and you have a series of GoZ files that you can replace, which will update these gems here. Now, the system for the gems is working on the largest scale dimension and it's going to adhere to that. So, things like the oval and the pear. We'll do it in the longest dimension. So if I just select the oval here and add that one, let me just hide the round one. You'll see that the four millimeters is going to be in this dimension. So all these stones are short on the Z axis here. So your dimension should always be either the vertical or the horizontal for those gems. Now, after you have those gems generated, you can use any of the tools inside of ZBrush, kind of move these around and place them on your ring or your bracelet, like so. Now, finally, if you're saving these files out to be reused, I highly recommend saving out a tool file. So coming up here and clicking Save As. 
The process for generating these sizes does generate quite a bit of files inside of ZBrush. So if you save a ZPR file over here, you have the potential of creating a really big file eventually. Finally, to double check which version of Ringmaster you have, you can simply click on Ringmaster and the version number will be located here. If you've already downloaded Ringmaster through Gumroad, you should receive a link to allow you to download the latest upgrade free of charge. So I hope that helps and happy ZBrushing.